So you're on Notion, you know how all the basic blocks work, you know how to lay out a page, but you don't really know how to design it. I know my first page was not the most aesthetically pleasing page, and I mean, it got the job done, but it was definitely a bit of a mess. So what I thought I'd do is share some of my design ideas going from when I first got into Notion to where I am sort of at now. I think a planner is probably the most common thing created in Notion, so I'm gonna go over some planner specific designs. When I'm working in Notion, I use a lot of keyboard shortcuts to speed things up a little bit. I did do a video, so make sure you check that one out on my top 30 keyboard shortcuts. But during this video, you will see all of the keystrokes that I'm using at the top of the screen. So once you've got your page set up, you can then start inputting some data. What I'm doing here is I'm just putting in text blocks, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, all of the days of the week. Then I'm going to turn them into heading blocks. Once I've turned them into the header blocks, I can then move them around the page and do what I want with them. This is a nice easy setup that you can do fairly quickly and you can put any of your tasks underneath it. You can shape it how you want, you can have it down the side or you can do what I'm doing on screen which is putting it across the top. Once you put the headers where you want, you can then put any information underneath them. So as you can see, I'm writing in all of the different things that I've got to do underneath Monday and then you can do that same thing for Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, all the way through the week. You can then change the header and put some background color in them if you want them to look a little bit different. Or what you could do is just change the color of the text. I think we're gonna go for red with the data underneath all of the weeks. You could keep them as a text box or you could change them into anything else such as a to-do list, a bullet point, a numbered list or the toggles. If they are toggles, you can put data inside them so you can have lists inside things to do during the week. If you don't want to see all of the data, you can turn the days of the week into toggles themselves. Then you can put all the tasks during the week into the days. So when it is a specific day, you can just select that day and all of the stuff will come out for that day. Another way you could do this is instead of setting it up by week, you could do it by month or quarterly, however you want to do it, it's up to you. For this example, I'm gonna use quarterly. So as you can see, I've added the title, I've changed the color just to make it a little bit different. Now what I'm doing is typing in the month and all the weeks in the month. I do want the month to look a little bit different, so I've changed the heading. And then for the weeks, I've also changed the heading settings on that as well. So instead of just duplicating that, what I'm actually doing is holding the Alt button on my keyboard and then clicking and dragging so it duplicates everything that I'm doing and moving it across. For me, it just makes it slightly easier. Of course, all the things that we did in the first example, you could use here. So you could turn the month into a toggle. You could turn the weeks into a toggle. It's entirely up to you. It's customizable to whatever you want. So you can go around changing the months and you could just leave it at that or you could just change it as it goes along. It's entirely up to you. For both of those previous examples, what I did is I just manipulated the page. For these ones, I'm actually going to use the database feature in Notion. To start with, I'm just going to create a calendar, then add in the tasks. And as you can see, you can add properties to all of the tasks. I'm going to change this tag, add in a new one and make it a status. You can then check the tick box or you can add in whatever criteria that you want, whether it is to do, finished, completed, done, you can choose. I'm now going to add in a second task and you can see all the data is exactly the same to the next task. So when you add in a task, all the properties will stay the same. As you can see, you can change whatever you can see in the calendar view. So you can see I've now added in the checkboxes. You can tick them from the calendar view. Because this is a database, you can see it in different ways. So I'm going to now look at the calendar, the database view, but I'm gonna look at the database through a table view instead of a calendar view. What this does is it takes the data, so the tasks, and put it in a table view. So you can still see all the same properties in this view. We'll now have a look at the board view, which is a typical Kanban board view. Because we have put in a select data, you can see that's up there and you can drag them across as you were to do in something like Trello. You can still tick all the checkboxes as you would in the calendar view or the table view. And you can see every time you change the data in whatever view it is, all of the data will be transferred across because it is just one database with different views in it. We'll now have a quick look at the list view if this is something that you would prefer. So in the list view, you can go into properties and then change all the data that you want to view. So you may not want to see everything at once, but in this case, we've only got a couple of pieces of information so we can see it there. And then the last view to cover is the gallery view. What this does is it puts the data into a gallery as you can see. So you've got task one and task two, all the data is still the same. All the data in a database is a page on its own. So what you can do is go into the page and change it by either adding an icon, adding a cover, anything you want and adding in data down the bottom. 
What I've done now is, because it's a gallery view, you can actually choose what to see in the gallery. So I've chosen to use the cover. So I can now see the cover instead of the content. You can then change the size of the gallery view, whether you want them medium, large or small. You can then add in all the data as you would in all of the others. Because this is a database, every time you add something in, it adds a page. But you can actually create a template for those pages. So when you want to add something in, you can create a template, which I'll show you in a minute, so that every time you add something in, there's already default data there. And if the date of something does change, you can go into the calendar view, just move the tile over, and the date of that task will change automatically. What I'm going to do now is show you how I personally use the databases currently to form my planner and what it looks like. So we create a calendar database just like I did previously. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go over and add a template. We're going to name it New Day, so every time we go over, we can see that it's a new day. I'm now going to change the icon to something that I, th I think represents a new day. So we'll go for a nice smiley face, son. That, that looks good. And then let's just type in day and find a cover for it. The clouds look pretty good. So what we're now going to do is actually set it up so that every time we start a new day, it tells us the day that it actually is, rather than the day that we made it. So we're going to go over and turn it to relative, click on the day so it's got something to go from, and that is today. What I'm now going to do is just add in a couple of things that I like to track during my day, so things like exercise, cleaning your teeth, and I put them as checkboxes, so all I've got to do is whenever a new day is in, I just tick the box to say that I've done it. Then what you can do is just add in some things that you want to have every day, so maybe a to-do list for the day, and maybe some places to put some journal information, maybe a journal entries. Now that we've finished a template, every time we create a new task, you can see the template will be there, so you can click it and everything that you've just done will automatically be put in. What I personally do is actually name the journal entry the date that it is, just so there's no confusion about when it is. So we're going to go along and add in all these different journal entries. If you do mistakenly click into the text box, it will insert a text box and those templates will disappear. But what you can do is actually just get rid of the text box so it's empty and the templates will reappear so you can reselect them. As you can see as we're putting in the journal, the day is changing so it's not always saying today, it's saying whenever it is relative to where we are now. Now I'm going to go into the calendar view and actually change the properties a little bit so I can see those habits so I can just tick them off from there. But for me personally, I prefer using the gallery view, just, just as personal preference. So what I'm going to do is make them a little bit smaller so they all fit on one line. Now I can see my week there. You could leave the content showing if you have some content in there and you want to see it at a first glance. My personal journal has a lot of stuff in there so I just use the cover because yeah, I think it looks a little bit better. Now I've got all my habits down the bottom so I can tick them off when I want and if I need to edit anything I can just go into each individual day and all of the stuff will be there. What you can then do, because it is actually a database, you can filter things, so you can filter it by day, whether you just want to see the next couple of days, next couple of weeks. It's entirely up to you how you filter all of those journal entries, because I can't imagine you wanting two, three hundred journal entries in your home screen. So you can mess around with the filters and filter pretty much whatever you want, wherever you want. I personally just have the upcoming week as something to show. Don't forget to watch this video for more productivity, tips, tricks and tools. I'll see you there.